Hey, Shalom. First thing and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory and honor is due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Yahweh Kakwadash. I want to give double honors unto the apostles and elders of the great millstone that rule in T12. Blessings and salutations unto the hopeful elect. No, it's in this gospel, bro. I lift up the standard of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, I guess it's titled Wisdom and Knowledge Should Be the Stability of Thy Time. This is kind of going into uh, what the elder brother Mawak Tazak was going into, calling on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and believing on those names and meditating on those names day and night. Um, we've been in Babylon for so long to the point that we've learned to take things into our own uh, power, so to speak. So oftentimes, you get in jams, you don't think to call on the name of the Lord, but as the brother said, with us, that's sake of nature. Okay, because everything that you do. You should find yourself calling on the name of the Most High, whether it's working or you, uh, you're in jam, you're in car trouble, you know, you're in physical trouble, whatever it may be. Even if it's just walking down the street, you know, calling and talking to the name of the Most, or talking to Yahweh Bashi, Yahweh Shai, and that name, because that name Yahweh and Yahweh Shai has vibrations to it, man. And you know, I'll be one of the brothers that tell you that it's been a lot of jams I've gotten out of using the name, man. Okay, and then you're gonna have instances too that calling on the name of the Lord and then you know you're going you may still have to put up a fight or a struggle because you know the Lord is testing our character you know but for the most part the Lord delivers out of all our trouble like King David stated uh, the Lord delivered him out of all his troubles you know from the flood of ungodly men <clears throat> which is yet to come in this day and age because the scriptures say that Esau or the enemy should come in as a flood then the standard of the Lord should be lifted against him okay so, with that being said, you're going to have to call on the name of the Most High, man. And that's the spirit, because whatever this bug is, he just flew on the window. And he just sitting here looking at me <laughs> while we getting into the spirit. So, hey, man, you how about you, man? How shy, man? He's beautiful. And wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of thy times. And the main part of that wisdom is knowing the name of the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? Knowing the name of you, how about you, man? How shy? Because calling on Christ... Jesus, <clears throat> God, Allah, Buddha, those names are not going to deliver you in a time of trouble. And that's the thing. And Elder Brother Mawaltazak, uh, he made an excellent point. He stated that we're the only ones with the connection to the power that's bringing the hell. So our power that's bringing this hell is going to bring Jacob's trouble upon the earth. Okay? Starting judging you Negro, Latino, and Native American first. That's our power. And we have direct access to him, man. Okay, we have direct access to the name of your Most High and His Son. That's why the scriptures say the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and he that runneth into it is safe. Because the first hint of trouble, that's the first thing you do is call on the name of the Lord, man. Okay, like when the police behind you and they pull you over, hey, you call on the name of the Lord. He delivers you. When you're going to court for whatever reason, call on the name of the Lord. You know, when you're going through financial woes, when you're going through things with uh, brothers or whatever. Or women or whatever it may be in your life Illnesses, you gotta call on the name of the Most High, man And he's gonna see to it that he gets you out of it Okay So, uh, that being said This is from the Southern Prepper I believe this guy's based in Kansas City, Missouri as well uh, He has like a podcast He brings out a lot of vital information about shortages Food shortages and price hikes around the country And um, it says, breaking news Another oil refinery explosion Okay, and if you notice these food processing plants, uh, these particular, uh, <coughs> uh, these food processing plants in these different centers that distribute food have been catching on fire like every month. It's been like two or three that went up in flames every month since I believe the beginning of last year, if I'm not mistaken, probably beyond that. Because it's Esau's job to do away with the, uh, with the food system. Because like the elder apostle Ramla went into another Antiochus moment. And they're going to besiege the cities, they're going to surround the cities, cut them off. They're going to ration out food and they're going to start detaining people. Okay, that's against this new world order. Okay, mainly men that come in the spirit as we do because we're prophesied directly against the new world order. Like, a while ago, I don't know if brothers remember, but the uh, apostles made a statement. The elect versus the elite. Okay, the elect on the right hand side and the elite on the left hand side because believe it or not they are the elect on the left hand side and we are the elite on the right hand side but we are the elect on the right hand side and they are the elite on the on the left hand on the, on the left hand side 
if you may understand that. So this hell they're getting ready to bring to the planet Earth is getting ready to topple, is, is getting ready to put every time that we ever went into captivity, any hardship, any economic collapse, Jacob's trouble is gonna make that shit look like child's play. Like a Curious George book, man. You know, and another example the elder brother Mawaltazak made, hey man, he stated <clears throat> one time he was in a jam as far as with his car running out of gas, man. And he called on the name of the Lord and he had already had the things set up, man. He already had it already set up to the point that the brother could give to point A to point B. And I got a similar testimony today, man. As, as mediocre as this may sound to brothers, I was um, in a sweeper truck, man. And you know, you sweep up the debris and all that other stuff. So I went to the dump site. And usually with this, you don't have to really get out unless you want to expect it. You know, and this may be kind of small in comparison, but this will show you that the Lord already provided the way out. Like the scriptures say, even in temptation, the Lord will find a way to deliver you. So I get to this dump site, man, and I try to dump this damn bed and I got some of it out, but a lot of this shit was stuck, man. Like a lot of this shit was stuck in the bed. And I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, how the hell am I gonna get this out of here? So you got this big water hose that they use to clean off these trucks, whatever, man. And that was like kind of down across the field. But I ain't feel like moving the truck down there because you had like four other trucks over there and I had to wait and all that other shit. So my thing is, I'm like, all right, cool. This bed is up, ain't nothing coming out. So I walked around and I found the shovel that was already there. You know what I'm saying? I found the shovel. So as I started playing with the shovel, the shit started getting in my eyes because it was windy outside. Then I looked, by coincidence, I looked in the damn cab of the vehicle and it was like a pair of safety glasses that wasn't even open. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the shit was really getting in my eyes. It was getting in my beard. And it was kind of disturbing me. I'm like, oh shit, I ain't trying to have you know allergies and allergic reactions, man. So the spirit like, look in the cab. And then I'm like, oh shit, that go a new pair of glasses right there. So, you know, just like little things like that. The Lord have already provided, like the shovel was just there, and then all of a sudden the safety glass was already in the fucking truck. You know, and then the spirit told me, was like, you didn't even have to really get out to do anything. Spirit, like, only thing you had to do was drive the fucking truck and step on the brakes and the shit had come down, you know, and I started doing it and it all came out, you know. So it's, the Lord always provide a way to get you out of things, man. It's as minuscule as that is, and there's several other examples too, you know, that was dealing with life threatening situations the Lord have come through for us, but. That's just an example of what the brother was going into. It was already provided for him. You know, the angel had already set up the scenario. So in case he ran out of gas, the tow truck was already on the side of the road. Okay. And the Lord does that. That's why in Jacob's trouble, man, we're not going to worry about food. We're not going to worry about water. We're not going to worry about shelter. We're not going to worry about washing our ass and stuff like that, man. Because, hey, the Most High is going to provide all those things for us. Because, hey, once again, wisdom and knowledge is the ability of thy time. So let me get that real quick. This is the book of Isaiah 33 and 6. It says here. Matter of fact, let's start at verses uh, 5. It says, The Lord is exalted, and he will dwell on high. And he hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Man, and Zion is the Israelites, okay? Which is the Hebrew word, monument. It's Zion, which means a monument. And a monument is like a moniker or something you gaze upon. Okay, like a memorial, so to speak. You know, like they got someone that's called the Washington Monument. Okay, it's like a memorial that represents something. And that monument represents the israelites our people it says in wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation okay and the main thing of that is knowing the name of the most high the heavenly father yahweh bashim yahweh shai man okay and calling on that because hey like the other brother he had a vision of jacob's trouble he said they were down like in his bunker praising the name of the most high man so hey when esau comes in with his floods when he comes in with his madness hey of course we're gonna call on the name of the lord the minute you hit a door, fly off the hinges, or the minute you see the troops outside surrounding your apartment building or your home, you're going to call on the name of the Lord, man, because it's second nature. Okay, it's like second nature. It's like putting on your shoes in the morning. It's like brushing your teeth. We're going to call on that because, hey, that's the name of refuge. That's a place of refuge, man. And whatever the Lord has happened, it happens because you're going to let the spirit play out to what it need be. Okay, but those of you people that's not rooted in the name of the Lord, man. You got camps out there that don't even call on a name, which is a scary thing, which is a primary pinnacle of this scripture. You don't call on the name of the Lord, you're in big trouble. And even if you do call on a name, you're not rooted in it because you're not rehearsing it, man. You're not constantly bringing it out. Okay, like when we pray, I don't I don't slip up and say Christ when I pray. I don't say all oh, Father God when I pray. I say no. I say, how about you mean how we shy, man? Okay, 
because those are the names that we were taught to pray in and those are the names we believe in through faith man okay and it says here in the strength of salvation and then the scripture say it should come to pass in that day that whosoever call on the name of the lord should be saved here this ye men of israel okay but it says the salvation and the fear of the lord is his treasure okay and that's the point man so hey we want to be in that spirit of calling on the name of the most high man because hey listen what king david said all right let's go to the book of psalms and the book of psalms is, is always a, a heavy it's heavy you get into these psalms you you end up reading 10 chapters of psalms a day man because it's like it's, it's it's like when you're reading it, it you're just getting grafted in it man it constantly builds and, it, and it's like it's a story full of prophecies man Okay, so this is the book of Psalms 124. It says here, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters have overwhelmed us, man, and the stream have gone over our soul. Right, the waters is going into this man's military, this man's power. Okay, because the scriptures go into the troops in the flood of ungodly men. Okay, which Esau is going to come in with them Gurga troops. Or them NATO troops, all right, or them UN troops, Slovakia, you know, he's going to come in with those different police forces, kicking in doors, detaining people, taking people's goods, seeing if people got the name, uh, I mean, Slovakia, see if people got the MOTB. And they tried that um, uh, during the time of the C-19, man, you know, they was kind of allegedly going around seeing if people got the jab, you know, they were sending around workers to people's homes to sign them up to get the jab. And a lot of people rebelled against it. But this time, with this coming financial collapse, man, they're going to try to make people by force bow down to this new world order. Okay? Because there's only so many people that they can get to consent to it. And in order for them to do it, they're going to have to put out that sword, man. Okay? And it says, then the proud waters have gone over our soul. Okay? And he's all Edom is proud as all hell. Because he's going to try to force an MOTB in you, man. By subtility, by coercion, or coercion. Or Cohortion, I can't pronounce that word for shit. But when you coerce somebody, man, meaning you passively, aggressively force them to do it. And he's doing that by the banks, the debit cards, you know, cash the societies, taking control of your money, pushing things in particular perspectives, threatening you, well look, man, you can't take eight thousand dollars out your account unless you do X, Y, and Z. And the shit goes on. It says then the proud waters have gone over our soul. But blessed be the Lord who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. And their teeth is the military, man. Okay? And their military because that's the strength of this man's kingdom. Outside his financial, his military. Because his military is the one that keeps him in power behind his dollar. That military is what keep this dollar going, man. Because, hey, when they go and invade other nations and set up central banks, hey, they pushing that dollar on people. And you notice people that try to succeed from this dollar, like Gaddafi, for example, when he tried to set up a gold standard of his currency, what happened? He ended up dead, man. Okay, same thing with Saddam Hussein. With Saddam Hussein. Okay, when he wants to set up his currency and set up a gold standard, then hey, the elites took his ass out. And they blamed it on the fact, oh, he had weapons of mass destruction. But that was never proven. You see? And it says, our soul is escaped as a bird out of a snare of the fowlers. And the snare is broken as we are escaped. And our hope is in the name of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Who made heaven and earth And that's the, that's, the, that's the key right there Okay The name of the Lord Now when you go into that word Lord uh, The Lord it goes into Yahweh Yahweh Okay it's not a higher A shar a higher Or a higher a shar yashaya But it's the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai man Okay And that's the name that the Lord is going to come in And that's the name that we must call upon In order to get salvation out of this Out of this captivity man Okay so with that being said, brothers, hey, call on the name of the Lord, man, because, hey, you want a short end out here. You see? So this is the book of Jeremiah 29, and I'm going to start at verses uh, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace, okay? And this is the, the plan. The Lord, he wants to deliver us. He wants to save us. He don't want us being put down and cast at asunder with the hypocrites out here, okay? The Lord has hope for his elect, man, because he's already predestined to save them. Whoever they may be, Lord's will, we're one of them. Lord's will, the men that you're seeing out there teaching on the highways and the byways is of that number. Okay, because you got men out there that's saying that they this, they that, they David. But the scriptures say you dare not make yourself of that number, man. And on top of that, the scriptures say we have no remembrance of former things. So, how can you call yourself 
a prophet of the Lord of the ancient world, you're not going to know exactly who you is. Like the Lord haven't revealed to me what prophet I was in the ancient world. I don't know. Now, my brother may say, hey, you come in this spirit or that spirit or that spirit. But we don't know, man. So for a, a, a shrewd fellow or a lewd fellow, okay, would come and, and say that they're King David or they, they you know, X, Y, and Z, then they going off, man. Okay, because, hey, King Masha, he never acknowledged the fact that he was David. Okay, because other men told him. But the Most High didn't tell him that, but other men told him. Okay, so regardless of that, he was, oh, I'm King David. No. But anyway, it says the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And what's our expected end? Salvation. Okay, believing in the name of the Lord, getting delivered by the chariots, you know? Entering and, and making it out of Jacob's trouble unscathed. Okay, because hey, believe it or not, brothers, most of us are gonna make it alive on this side, man. Okay, now you're gonna have martyrs here and there, but that's their testimony. But for the most part, hey, we're gonna make it out on we're gonna make it out of this thing, man, unscathed for the most part. Now you're gonna have your bumps and bruises because you know some brothers gonna be on a run, some brothers gonna be in hiding, some brothers gonna get the power, you know, some brothers may get into scuffles here and there. You may have to put men to flight. But overall, brothers, we getting on the chariots with our faculties, man, and we're going to be changed because it will be unbalanced for the Lord to kill us all again. Because during the time of the Roman Empire, all the disciples were pretty much martyrs or all the followers of Yahweh Shai were pretty much martyrs, man. OK, even before Yahweh Shai, the prophets were sacrificing to the Lord. OK, all of us, man. Same thing with uh, 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 like when you go into the Daniel, the prophet, hey, he was in alliance. Then, hey, they was trying to take him out and that would have been a martyr. For you, how about Shimi how shy? But the angel, hey, delivered him, man. Okay, and we have to believe that. Because if you don't believe that and you don't have faith in those miracles, then hey, you're not gonna have that expected end. Because you're gonna be constantly doubting. So don't get discouraged because you're not seeing things go up in your life, or you're not seeing chariots, or you know, brothers are not acknowledging. Don't get don't get discouraged at that, man. Because the Lord is gonna come through when he needs to come through, you know? And he's gonna come through for us all if you believe in that name. All right, so this is the book of uh, Psalms 34, and I'm gonna start at verses. Uh, let's start at verses uh, 15. It says, "The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry." Who's the righteous? The hopeful elect. Okay, because a hey, day in and day out we're crying, man. Okay, like the scriptures say, those that cry, you should be reaping tears of joy. Okay, woe to them that uh, 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 blesses them that cry now; they should rejoice later. And we are in a mourning state, man. And the elect, they're going to be in a downtrodden and a mournful state. They're not going to be out here turning up or twerk queen party here and there. They're not going to be in that mirthly spirit. I say it that way. Now, there's nothing wrong with mirth and kicking it and parlaying with brothers and going out. Of course, you know, we do that. But overall, our overall concept and outlook on this place is going to be that of sign and crime, bitterly. You know, because every morning I wake up, man... I'm in a mournful spirit because you, it's another day in, in captivity, another day in prison. Another day you got to deal with Esau. Another day you got to deal with your wicked ass people, man. Like out there in Ducktown uh, in Chicago, man. This one guy getting out the gym. Three niggas rolled up on him and tried to rob him, man. Okay? You know, dude just get out of the gym to work out. And yeah, he get a gun pulled on him. But yet, hey, he got loose. You know, he elbowed dude in his shit and broke loose. But the fact, it was 16 more robberies committed after that in that same area. And that shows you we in a grievous state, man. And who wants to live like that? You going outside, motherfucker, putting a gun in your goddamn head. Give me your shit. You know? Like I was uh, at this little, uh, I was meeting with these people like two days ago. And this one, I guess the nigga just got out of jail or something. But this one low-life, detestable, degenerate nigga, you know, we was talking. He was asking me questions and shit. But the way he looked at me, he had that look on him like, nigga, if we weren't in this public place... And I caught you slipping off. He had that look of envy on him, man. Like, like he just wanted it. And I peeped it, man. In the back of my mind, I'm like, nigga, I'll take your fucking head off, man. You even think about it. But in his mind, say he like, look, man, if I catch you slipping, I'm gonna get you. And I picked that on him because you know I'm gonna jig look at you when they ain't got shit. They live the life of misery, bad decisions, drugs, getting locked up, three or four felonies, man. And nigga, he ain't got shit to lose. He want what you got, which me personally, I ain't got shit. <laughs> you know, I got my daily bread I got a roof over my head I got clothes on my back, a vehicle to drive And a job to work, and that's it 
I ain't out here making no millions of dollars, man. I ain't no fucking millionaire. All right? I ain't, I ain't, we ain't doing that. I ain't driving the most expensive car. Shit. Brother seen what kind of whip I drove, man. And that motherfucker caught on fire. And that's not a $100,000 car. <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> you know, regardless of that. But that, that's the spirit we in. A mournful state. And we got to get out of here. But it says, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Okay? To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivered them out of all their troubles, okay? And what's this main trouble? Jacob's trouble. Because we're going to cry unto the Most High to get us out of our hell, and he's going to deliver us from this said endeavor, man. Okay? Because brothers going to come up against situations in Jacob's trouble. It's going to be dangerous, okay? People are going to be armed to the teeth. I mean, it's going to literally be a bloodbath out here. And the brother broke it down in the, in the vision he had. He basically stated that, look, man, at nighttime, shit was just crazy. Daytime it was crazy too, but at nighttime, that's when the spirits turn. It's a different spirit from day and night, man. The same thing you look at at day is totally different at night, man. Okay, and it makes sense. Like if you ever was a kid and you had an overactive imagination, you could have a lamp post in your bedroom, looking innocent as hell. But at nighttime, that shit got a different spirit on it, man. You know, like um, I remember when I was like seven, eight years old. Um, my brother, he matter of fact, no, yep, I was like eight, nine years old. My brother probably was like one years old at the time one or two years old and um in the room my sister's room he had a wooden high chair it was like a wooden high chair and my mother used to throw all types of clothes and shit on it because he wasn't he, he wasn't in it no more he outgrown it so to speak so it was sitting like where the closet is at but it was like a wall and then you had the entryway into the to the room so my sister she had like this pouch like this book bag sitting on right it was sitting right above the high chair it was like a nail on the wall and a book bag was hanging on the wall and then the fucking chair was sitting there so when you turn the lights off at nighttime but you got the hallway or the bathroom light on you can see the shadow in the room so if you in the room it looked like somebody just sitting there okay it looked like a like a witch or some shit with a with a with a big ass head just sitting there you know and it looks like a, it's a whole different spirit and it used to creep me out when i was a kid man but when you turn on the lights, it's nothing but a high chair. So that shows you that it's a different spirit at nighttime, man. Okay? And it's going to get crazy out here, man. Like a real life purge. And brothers going to be in, up into all types of shit. People going to be running down the street, kicking in doors, beating each other up, man. Okay? Pestilence, famine, martial law troops, people getting put to death. That shit going to be all around. It's going to be a highly aggressive society, man, in a little while. And if you ain't got the name of the Lord and you're not covered by that grace, you ain't going to make it out here, man. And that's what the brother was going into. Because a vision I had a few years ago, I remember I was standing in the middle of the, uh, of the, of the bedroom. And it was 4.44 a.m. in the morning. And I seen it go down, man. And the crazy part about it was, it wasn't even no uh, alarm clock in my room. But the Spirit showed me the numbers in red, 444, which is mercy. And then... I heard the troops kicking in the doors and shit, and I literally thought they was outside raiding everybody's apartment in the vicinity, man. Because that's how heavy the vision was. But the vision had me standing in the middle of the room, and I'm hearing screams, I'm hearing doors get on the ground, gunshots, and the clock said 444, but it wasn't a clock in the room. Okay? That showed me through the spirit, mercy is coming, and on top of that, they're going to roll, man. Okay? And it says here, the face of the Lord is against them that to do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. But the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all their troubles, man. Okay? And that's the point. Our troubles. And we are in trouble. Okay? And the two-thirds of you, you're going to be in even more trouble in the times to come. But the thing of it is, the Lord is not going to deliver you. And it says here, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And save as such as be it a contrite spirit. Okay? A broken down spirit. Downtrodden. Okay, many affliction, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Okay, so when brothers get in them FEMA camps, hey, whether you die or whether you get delivered out of that, regardless, it's still a victory, man. Okay, because if the Lord delivered you up to death to be a testimony into his name, hey, that's the thing of that. That's a beautiful thing, man. A deliverance. And the brothers that said to go through that martyrdom or that being martyred, hey, you're gonna have the spirit on you to deal with that. Okay, the Lord ain't gonna have you in there knowing that you can't deal with being put through that shit, man. If you want a man of the Lord and you gotta face the guillotine, the Lord gonna put a spirit on you to deal with it, man. It's gonna build you up to it. You know? Unless you're just a wicked ass Jake 
and the Lord wants to judge you, then you will be getting the Saul 4 treatment. <laughs> okay? But it says, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Okay? But the Lord redeemeth the souls of his servants, and none of them that trusted him shall be desolate, man. All right? So, hey, brothers, man, that's all I really wanted to say on that. Giving all praises and glory and honor that is due to you. How about you? How was shy? And with that, shalom and the bark of